Everybody loves music, and we all have our favorite bands. A lot of us love to go and see live music, especially our favorite bands. But what if your band isn't touring? Or maybe you live somewhere where bands never tour. Or what if the band's getting on in years and might not be able to rock as hard as they used to? Sadly, maybe you want to see a classic artist that you never got to see before the key members passed away. That's why we have a proliferation of tribute bands. Anyone who has seen the care, the attention to detail, and the love put in by some of the tribute bands out there know how impressive they can be. Which is why today, we're joined by Katie Darrell, who hosts World's Greatest Tribute Bands, Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific on Access TV. This is Spotlight on Katie Darrell. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Oh, there it is. Metallica with a Metallica tribute band. Damage Inc. will be on World's Greatest Tribute Bands this week, which we'll talk about. Welcome to Spotlight On. I'm Christian Blatt, host of AfterBuzz TV's Trump Report and Mets Rap 360. I also have my own weekly podcast called The Blackcast. I'm on Twitter at ChristianDMZ. Joining me today here in studio, one of my favorite guests from over the years on my podcast, Katie Darrell, welcome to the show, Katie. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, this is great. And so now we're, we're going to just let Metallica build in the background. And Steve, you can leave them on for a little while because there's a lot of ramp up here. This was this was probably a great talk up record back in the day. You could get time, date, traffic, you know, <laughs> stay tuned. We'll be giving away $100, you know, all that stuff. You can get it in before the, before the real yeah. riff even starts. So, Katie, let's start with the fundamentals. These are the world's greatest tribute bands, not cover bands Not talk about the difference bands. okay big difference i always say don't use the c word all right <laughs> yeah. you kiss your mother with that mouth <laughs> a cover band as many of you probably are very familiar with because of going to bars <laughs> i assume you go to bars uh, those are dudes or gals that play a variety of tunes so you know they're usually just in layman's clothes you know normal t-shirt jeans what have you and they'll maybe pull out a little benatar and then some journey and then maybe a little foreigner they're great musicians and they're totally fun to watch but they are so different from a tribute band a tribute band tributes one artist and right. they dress up and act kind of it's basically like theater if you will um a great example is our um tribute to elton john kenny metcalf this is a great a guy that we, we all we love. know very well we're big he, fans of kenny metcalf. not only has he appeared on the show multiple times but he um comes to the show as well so if you you know when we get to that detail just know that when you come see the show you get to meet kenny metcalf and elton john guy um this is someone who plays the keyboards you know plays the piano that dresses up in costumes from specific tours you know knows in detail oh yeah, this he is... has the sequin dodger uniform yeah. that, that uh, elton wore i like 1981 or whatever exactly it was. Yeah. and so he he looks like him he has the talent of the voice and the musicianship um and then he'll even like you know talk in an accent like him so it's really fun so a tribute band you know basically is doing i i don't even want to say an impersonation it truly is an homage to these bands so this season when we have a tribute to the beatles you will see you know the guys dressed up in sergeant pepper's outfits speaking in british accents playing the instruments as they were played by the beatles for instance our paul mccartney um taught himself how to play left-handed because oh, wow. that's how paul did it that, like yeah. he was not an original lefty so this is how crazy detailed well, these tribute bands say. are that attention to detail is so important because if i saw that i probably wouldn't think about how paul plays left-handed right i know that now that you say it but it's not something that i would look at the band and like oh the band's good except uh, what's with the what's with the right-handed paul so that's so important yeah. because to them there are people who would be like oh no they're oh. not an authentic enough beatles band i don't want to see this one absolutely yeah. like when when uh, a couple seasons ago we had a tribute to nirvana yeah. And, you know, obviously one big detail was that he was a lefty as well. So I had to find a lefty, Kurt Cobain, and he had to have rockin' hair. Well, that's very important. <laughs> yeah. No, and I mean, because it's a TV show, the obviously the appearance is just as important. Because I think a lot of tribute bands get the sound down. They know the songs really well. Right. But having that look is so important. And so for our listeners and viewers on YouTube, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can join us in the chat, ask questions to Katie or myself. And Katie's on Twitter, at Katie Darrell, by the way, D-A-R-Y-L. And for our listeners who haven't seen the show, and shame on you if you haven't seen the show, uh, it 
talk a little bit about how it works. You know, it's per, yeah. they perform live at the Whiskey A Go Go, the exactly. famous, the legendary Whiskey A Go Go, the world Go-Go. famous Whiskey A yeah. Go Go. So what happens? Like a, a day in the life of the world's greatest tribute bands. This is a live television show. Um, in order to see it, you have to turn on your television. It's not an internet thing. It is a television thing. You have to turn on your TV to access TV. That's the network that Mark Cuban owns in conjunction with Ryan Seacrest Productions, AEG, CAA Talent Agency. There's a collaboration with CBS. We have so many great partners in this TV network. Um, and so you turn on the TV on Wednesday night at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, and you will see an awesome tribute band. For instance, last week was the season premiere and we had a tribute to Led Zeppelin. This Wednesday, we will have a tribute to Metallica. So you turn on the TV and it's me standing there with the crowd screaming behind me. We're at the Whiskey A Go-Go. You know, I tell you a little bit, you know, some fun details about the band. And then we go straight into the concert. And it's really about the music. I always tell the bands because I go over their set list with them. Don't chit chat. No one wants to hear your chit chat and why you were motivated to create this tribute. You know, <laughs> as much as I like the story, the viewer at home, you just want to you want to sit there and just rock out at home. So not only can you watch live, you can tweet live and your tweets will be popping up on the screen. So you could let us know, hey, I don't like that drummer or hey, that drummer is awesome. And I will tweet back with you as well. So you might pop up on the screen. You might just get me hitting you privately, uh, telling you to scram and get off here if you're going to be negative. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you also so it's a live TV show. So there is the live studio audience, if you will. So if you are in the Los Angeles area, you can get free tickets and you can come be part of the show. Obviously, you will have set your DVR to record it at right, home because you wouldn't want to miss it. Because that's such an important part <laughs> of you know keeping the show on and keeping people yeah. watching the show is to DVR and watch. Uh, I, I like to go myself. Uh, I because I know you, I get to sit up in the VIP hey, section. It's VIP. Yeah, I get to rub elbows with Kenny Metcalf as Elton John. <laughs> and but so for people t- that just want to go and be in the crowd, eventbrite.com. That's where right. you get the tickets. Except for this Wednesday, because yes. Metallica, Damage Inc., all sold out. Sold out. So if you want to see that, you have to watch it on TV. Exactly. Right. Now, what I was... And wait, can, yeah. let me say, a lot of people when... Um, who have gone to live television record or t- television recordings in the past um, leave with a bad taste in their mouth because they don't realize that like if you want to go on the prices right you have to wait in line for like two and a half hours and then like there's you know you know they tape things and they say hold on let's reshoot that and it's it turns into this weird six hour ordeal for an hour long television show and people the magic of television is sucked out of it sometimes yeah, when you're I, part of a studio last audience. Last week I was invited to a taping of American Ninja Warrior and it starts at like 8 p.m. and it goes until 5 a.m. and I'm like, no thanks. Yeah, no, yeah, I, that's, I, that's, I'm I, exhausted. That, yeah. So what's great about our show is since it is live television, is it literally starts at 7 p.m. on time because that's how television works, folks. And <laughs> you know, some some weeks it's a 60 minute show and some weeks it's a 90 minute show. Um, so it, it ends on time as well. So you can still get home get into your pajamas and be asleep by 9.30 if right. you are coming Which, to this taping. for those of us who have parents, or who are parents <laughs> and have small children at home, the idea of being able to be in my pajamas at 9.30 is very appealing. And, you know, when you go live, you'll sometimes see one, two, or in the case of the Prince tribute, like six extra songs. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of a fun part, too, is you get to see a little more. Yeah. Now, the thing to keep in mind, though, is as you mentioned, it airs live and it only rebroadcasts one time, one time. a couple hours later, and then you can never see it again. Never see it again. So you have to watch it live and or DVR it. But, you know, obviously watching live is is where it's at. So it's interesting. It's just you have to see it that night, basically. It is. I I like to explain it. That's kind of like Saturday Night Live. It's really only fun that that week. You know, occasionally they're like, oh, well, there's a great skit and I wish I saw that. Uh, You 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 and I have both been to a taping of Saturday Night Live. I know because we're at the same one. And the thing is, you're there and you're in the audience. You're like, oh, it was a really great show. Have you talked to somebody who saw it on TV? Yeah, really wasn't that good. You're like, yeah. oh, but it was so funny in the studio. Yeah. So it's like being there, being live. Obviously, your show is always great on always TV great. and live. But it's just it's interesting being part of a live audience, being in right. the crowd. It, it, it's so much more exciting. So you obviously want to do that, especially if you're in Los Angeles. But some of these acts, people I, I've talked to people, they travel for them. Right. Yeah. Now, there's a specific question in the chat, and I want to make sure we get to okay. it. From E. Schmitty. What band is most requested by fans to see again? He votes for Boss Sticks, oh. which was great. The combination Boston Sticks band. Yes, and that's actually, it's funny because I, I was earlier describing the difference between a cover band and a tribute band. And some people are a little touchy with Boss Sticks because they're like, what? That's a mashup. That's more of a cover than a tribute. It's not. All right. Just don't argue me on this point. Trust me. They're, <laughs> that band is so good because the vocals. Yeah. 
for I mean, Boston and the Stakes, it's they're not, insane. They're not so, easy. Yeah. I mean, to be able to nail those that range of, yeah. of those high notes is very impressive. So we do actually, believe it or not, we do, uh, uh, who, E. Schmitty is correct. We get a lot of requests to bring back Bostics. We get a lot of requests for... Um, Van Halen and ACDC in general. You know, there's yeah. we've had two of each, and I swear we just get flooded all the time with people saying, I want to see them again. People love Van Halen. People love ACDC. The Beatles are always a fan favorite, and people love the Fab Four and uh, Britain's Finest, both of which have been on our show. Right, and the Fab Four is the one that's going to be on as part of the season finale, yeah, which we'll talk so. about. That'll be an exciting show. The interesting thing, of course, with the instances of both ACDC and Van Halen, they both throughout their career have two very good, prominent, yeah. high-profile singers. Now, ACDC apparently also has Axl Rose now, <laughs> but there's been no music, no new music recorded. So it's interesting. So you can get a David Lee Roth slash Sammy Hagar, right. or one who does only one or the other. Now, the, the Van Halen tribute I saw, I think there was a Sammy Hagar right. who joined them, but the band only has a, a Dave. So you have to carry an extra singer, I guess, if you really want to get the entire catalog of a band's history. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it is really fun because just like people being passionate about the real band and being like, oh, I only like the Hagar era and, and what have you, yeah. people are equally as passionate about their tribute band and which tribute you're getting out of him. So yeah, um, it's a no, touchy and, subject. And believe me, we could talk about Van Halen for the rest of the show. But the interesting <laughs> thing is like, everybody thinks like, oh yeah, David Lee Roth, he was so great. When you look up and you think about the songs that Van Halen had with Sammy Hagar, it was like mm -hmm. so many like number one singles. And they're all great songs, but you don't hear them very often because you know who doesn't play them live? Van Halen. Yep. <laughs> because yep. Dave's not gonna be able to sing those songs. Well, and you know, it, what's really funny is Sammy Hagar actually has a television show on Access TV, yes, the does. same network. Yeah. Um, it's like Road Trip with Sammy Hagar. And he, Sammy Hagar is so genuinely cool. Yeah. I've hung out with him on multiple occasions, both for work and just hang out. Just hanging out with Sammy just Hagar. Just hanging out at Cabo Wabo. <laughs> yeah, just hanging out at the hair, hair salon <laughs> together, apparently. Um, and he's just such a cool dude. And he actually, one of his biggest arguments that he he's made is that he doesn't have permission to play his... His Van, Van Halen, Halen songs, songs oh, wow. on recorded television things. So, like, if he wanted to do a Sammy Hagar music special, he would not be able to play he any could of play his Van I Halen. He can't drive stuff. 55, but he can't play right now. Or exactly, oh, because the the riff between uh, him and the boys is still so thick. Um, wow. And so he actually has directly re referenced the world's greatest tribute bands and saying, like, I don't know how they get away with it by us, you know, getting to play some of these songs. And the truth is, is that's the magic of live television. <laughs> right, because there's a it's lot live. of rules go. Go and read about the laws and what you don't do, but with live television, you know, I don't need the permission per se. I have to pay for it. You yeah, know, you gotta pay for it. Of course, it. you gotta pay. Yeah. Um, but you don't have to have the permission from the artist. Um, and so then that's why we don't replay things again yeah. because. Well, It'd be really hard to, to get go, the permission. To go back to Saturday Night Live for a second, I had a friend who actually, he worked on the production side, and there would be sketches that used music, or they had like a mm -hmm. Disney parody once, and during the live show, you can get away with that. As soon as it gets rebroadcast, you're like, hey, whatever happened to that skit? Nope. It's can't, can't dead. Use it again. You will not yeah. find that online Which, unless someone so recorded it on their phone, watched yeah, the TV. Yeah, that's the only way to see it. So yeah, it's obviously... Uh, so one of the things I was going to ask you, Pierre Kelly in the chat has now asked, how did they pick you as a host for a tribute band show? Did you come up with the idea first? It's your show, correct? Well, well so it, it is my show. Um, what's great is Access TV, a little bit of history, used to be called HDNet. Right. It was the world's, the world's first high definition TV network. And it was started by Mark Cuban. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but Mark Cuban, you maybe know him just as, you know, the cool guy from Shark Tank or the loudmouth NBA owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Um, he was a millionaire and then became a billionaire because he was the guy that basically invented streaming audio. The reason why we have streaming audio online on the internet is because Mark what, Cuban. What we're doing right now, we're streaming video and audio, you know. Yeah. It's because of him. Th thanks, Mark. <laughs> he put together the team that invented the software yeah. and sold it. And so when he sold his company um, and the shares to, I believe it was uh, Yahoo, Yahoo, I think, yeah. He went to bed a millionaire and woke up a billionaire. He then, it's a great night. Yeah, a good night, right? <laughs> I only woke up with a hangover this morning. Jeez, I can only imagine having more dollar signs. Um, so he took this money, obviously, and like any cool person would do, he bought the Dallas Mavericks. He bought this dope-ass house in um, Dallas, Texas. And one of the rooms was like a media room. So he went to what, what was like, it was like, 
Radio Shack back then. I don't know. This is 1997, 98, 99. And they sold him this very fancy television, a high definition TV. Oh, yeah. There was no programming for it. So he basically said, let's have a TV network that has high definition programming so that we can use these fancy screens. He created HDNet. HDNet then merged several years later to become Access TV. I've been with the network since basically it started. It's been around for 15 years. Um, I know this is a terribly long answer. I, uh, this is the third show that I've hosted and produced for Mark Cuban's television network. Um, and so when my second show ended, Mark graciously didn't fire me. He said to me, let's come up with a new idea. What are we going to do? And we bounced ideas back and forth, back and forth. And then one day, it was it was almost like Thanksgiving Eve, he emailed me and was like, hmm, tribute bands, do something with that. And I was like, what, what, is, what, is, what is, I don't even know what this means. Mom! Yeah. Mom! <laughs> and um, I basically from there researched tribute bands, figured out the this whole subculture and subgenre, and came up with the format. And so I put it together as the producer. And as the producer, I said, you know who'd be a really good host for this show? <laughs> this girl right here. So Did you have to audition for yourself? Uh, the casting couch <laughs> that I put Yikes. myself through was really intense. Yeah. But you had a great audition, and that's I all that mattered. It. Yeah, so that was sort of what I was wondering is how it was put together. But when you think about it, uh, I don't know exactly what's on Access TV all day, but what I see is a lot of music-related programming. Right. So it's a perfect fit for them. It you know, is. you mentioned that that Sammy Hagar has a show. They have reruns of Gene Simmons' show, and there's a lot of concerts and things. So it's a perfect fit. We even have Nashville and the UK version of X Factor. Oh, that's right. On network. Yeah. So. so exactly. So there's so there's music. You know, pretty much throughout the day. So it is a great fit. And this is the eighth season, which is crazy to think about because I've known you for three years and that was the third season. So right. you just pack a lot of seasons in yeah, there. Yeah, we typically do two seasons um, a year. We kind of have a spring season and a fall season. They're usually anywhere from 10 to 12 episodes. Uh, there was the exception of, I guess, what was it? 2015 I did I was pregnant so we only had so, one season so Mark Cuban the kind of boss that wasn't like yeah you're pregnant so uh, where's the show <laughs> yeah you exactly know? why don't you put on one of those slutty dresses <laughs> and go to that bar he actually was uh, it was the best maternity leave uh, anyone could have asked for I, I know that that's a real hot button issue right now in politics yeah. um, and rightfully so and I can say Access TV and Mark Cuban made my whole pregnancy and maternity leave so wonderful i'm so gracious and thankful and um it's just it's i am so lucky to get to work at a place that i basically can call my co-workers family yeah no absolutely and it, you know, from everything you've said to me you know off air that mark's a great boss to he have is. and he's very accessible mm -hmm. which billionaires are not always accessible <laughs> no. there, there might be a billionaire in the white house right now probably not that easy to get a hold mm. of so but what i was going to say was that you were talking about maternity leave and it turned out that you had your son Hawkeye right around the time my wife had our son Felix. Mm -hmm. So I knew you from the show, but then all of a sudden it was like, oh, we have these kids that are like literally two months apart. Yeah. So we started taking them to the, the Mommy and Me movies on Monday mornings at the theater near where we both live. And it was just this fun thing where it's like, you bring this little kid, to, it's filled with little kids. Yeah. It's such the opposite of going to the Whiskey Go Go to see a tribute right, band. Yeah. You know, it's like you're there, it's 10 in the morning. Boy, our relationship changed. Yeah, it was, exactly. It was like, I'm just going to like keep my eyes locked on the screen because I, I don't, I'm you like, know, there's feeding there's going on. There's a baby on, on my you know? And But it, it's it's such a like a fun thing to do yeah. and there were so many, you know, moms there. Now, as we've, t I think we talked about this in a previous interview that we did. Most of the movies, very kid-friendly. Yeah, yeah, Zootopia and such. Sure, except for The Revenant. For some reason, they thought it was a good idea to Which was show... my son's first movie, which <laughs> I'm sure he my, hates Winnie the Pooh my, now. My, yeah, exactly. He's terrified of Winnie the Pooh, and if he sees Yogi Bear, he's just going to cry. <laughs> but my son's first movie was the Peanuts movie, so that's like uh, a little bit more kid-friendly. Yeah. But anyway, so that was fun, and yeah, obviously we got to know each other a lot better because, uh, you know, it was just like, oh, let's take pictures of the kids. And yeah. when we saw Batman vs. Superman, they both had like little Superman yep. outfits on. So they're going to be pals. They and are. what we like to talk about is Felix and Hawkeye one day starting a baby tribute band. <laughs> you know? Now, we're not quite sure what yet, but please let us know if you're in the chat or you want to tweet out a suggestion. I, I was tempted with Baby Gaga. Yeah. Oh, my God. Baby <laughs> Gaga is perfect. Wah, wah, goo Gaga, <laughs> baby Goo Gaga. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, back to Mark Cuban for a second. Yeah. I remember you told me that one of the reasons that the U2 tribute was on a couple times is because yeah. Mr. Cuban's a big fan. Does he give you feedback about a lot of the bands you choose? I mean, is it... He, he does. What's 
great is I always tell people, um, and, and I swear I say this in every interview, um, is that Mark Cuban is very hands-on and hands-off, meaning when he has an opinion or a suggestion, you will get an email. It may be 2 a.m., it may be 2 p.m. He will drop you a note and let you know exactly what's on his mind. But then it might go radio silent for weeks or months. Right. And that's always good. <laughs> but then it also starts to get to you because you're like, oh, I haven't heard from him in a while. Yeah. Does he know? It's like, we did he five does... really good shows, yeah. but he didn't say you anything. You do yeah. know I'm employed. <laughs> Hello? Is this thing on? <laughs> um, so I, I love that about him is that he he trusts his employees and he trusts that you're steering the ship. And if he, he thinks that you're going off course, he will let you know. Um, and I remember when I was booking that first season in particular, I was so, so nervous. And so every band, before I even put a contract out to them, you know, I'd say to Mark, I was like, okay, I think I found, I think I found um, a Fleetwood Mac. And he'd like respond, yes. And I'd be like, yes. <laughs> and I mean, each band was like that. And, and since then, I haven't had to go through him. Um, and it's not that I had to, I just felt like I wanted to make sure that I was doing this right. You to make sure right. that you were actually and choosing I guess the right And I pants, would say yeah. I gained my confidence after that season and said, okay, I understand. And, and I just know what works for our network. You know, a lot of people say, how do you pick which, which bands? And the truth is, is not only I, I look for sound and talent first and foremost. Of I don't course, want yeah. you know a crap band on television. So they have to be good at what they do. But it also has to resonate with the access TV crowd. And and sometimes the live studio audience doesn't quite understand that because they will say, why don't you ever have a X, Y, or Z tribute band? And as much as some of those bands might be fantastic ratings it's all about ratings and so i want to cater to the access tv crowd and they love classic rock they like rock they like country um as much as i love grunge they don't love grunge as much so you know right I, so you referenced the nirvana tribute mm -hmm. which was one that i was personally very oh, excited so for because first of all the band was great but even before i got there to see them i never got to see nirvana because right. they broke i was in high school and they also unfortunately weren't around for very long right there was one show in new york that i could have gone to and then they never really toured after that unfortunately so getting to see those bands that you've never seen is great but like Nirvana is sort of at the top you know there was also a Pearl Jam tribute mm -hmm. so in that genre they're sort of the only ones you could ever, ever really do I mean I guess a band like Soundgarden might be Alice right. in Chains but those are that's you know when you start going down the list they're, they don't have the appeal everybody right. knows Nirvana songs exactly. you might have to think about some of those other bands Soundgarden Alice in Chains and it was special the season that I had a tribute to Nirvana I get really OCD about you know picking bands for special reasons right and that happened to be i believe it was the 20th uh year anniversary of kurt cobain's death yes. um so i was like you know this is a good time if ever i was going to break the mold and do something that may not work with the network but you know needs to show that there are other tribute bands out there and purpose behind them i felt that that was you know a very special reason right when we're going to talk about this season as a whole in a moment and that includes a non-rock band which we'll talk about there have been a few there have been uh I, that i've seen anyway i remember a sinatra johnny cash yeah. and there was a beastie boys one so talk about <laughs> yes. the decision about okay well you know what we this isn't a classic rock audience but it's Sinatra, come on. Right, exactly. Yeah. When you think of a tribute band or um, an artist that's being, you know, honored by someone that maybe you would call an impersonator, if you will, you know, Elvis and Sinatra, you know, come to mind. But then I was like, these are, you know, artists that have a huge catalog, huge popularity. Um, and it really resonated with our audience on Access TV because they appreciate the classics. Um, and so it, it felt right to kind of go a little bit old school. Um, even like this last season, we did a Beach Boys tribute. You know, that right. was a little bit older, but you know, it worked worked for my audience. Um, it was dreamy, it was romantic. It and was as fun. always, it helped because that band was great. Like that was <sighs> one I was just watching on TV and I was like, wow, this band is great. Yeah. yeah, and I had been searching for a Beach Boys tribute pretty much since the end of season one. And it took, it actually, it took my husband found that band and brought oh, it wow. to me because I had gotten a lot of submissions and they just weren't hitting it, you know, in the sweet spot for me. And I had done a lot of searches and uh, believe it or not, I had been searching and I had asked a a lot of people too and no one could recommend one that really was up to par for me and I had been doing all my searches believe it or not like I think using Google and my husband just switched up at the search engine and these guys came up like at the bottom of page two somewhere oh, wow. and 
or you're like, oh, certainly they must have broken up. This is why they didn't pop up sooner. <laughs> and I reached out, and they were adorable. They were so sweet. They, they were, were from so somewhere kind. in the Midwest, right? Yeah, yeah, and they were so professional. I, I loved it. Like, they got to the venue before me. I'm always the first person there, you know. I basically am unlocking the doors for everyone. And they were there. Like, I opened the doors, and they were like, hey, hey, <laughs> we're here to be the Beach Boys. I was like, oh, I love you guys. Yeah, when you think about it, a band like the Beach Boys, you know, it's such a long history. But they also, they had so many lineup changes. Is, yeah, they sound so different. So sure, you can play Kokomo, but what about the stuff from Pet Sounds? <laughs> you know, and so being able to cover, you know, the the Beatles, it's a it, there's some different sounds, but it is yeah. from a shorter time span. So something like the Beach Boys, where they continue to record for so long and have hits in different decades, like I remember the Aerosmith tribute, Draw the Line. It was right. like you could have done one that was just songs from the '70s or just one from the '90s, but uh, you know, you got to be able to play it all, which right. is obviously a, an important part. Now. You know what to expect from seeing the audition videos. Right. But has there been a band that when you actually see them, maybe it's during soundcheck, but when you actually see them on stage, you're even more blown away than you thought you would Ooh, be? Are there any that um, come to mind that you were that much more impressed by seeing them live? You know, that's a really, really great question. Um, bands, Thank you. I came up with it myself. <laughs> bands that do great harmony always impress me in person. Um, I remember about two seasons ago we had... Um, I believe it was called On the Border, and oh, the they were Eagles, Eagles tribute. Yeah. Um, Florida, South Carolina? I, I can't even... God, I, I just totally apologize, you guys. Um, they were really great. The video was good. And you always, I always get nervous when I see videos because, you know, the magic of editing, right? Yeah. Bells and whistles and smokes and mirrors. And so I always ask bands, you know, when you submit your video, I don't want your edited video. I want just a feed off the board and just show me what it looks like dirty and raw because I know what it's going to be like when my team gets a hold of you guys yeah. and they're mixing live. I, I have confidence in my team. So just send me your raw stuff. Um, and so they had a really professional video. And so I was always a little nervous that I was like, mm, are they trying to trick me? And yeah. then they showed up and just really hit it out of the park. Another great band... Um, um, was our tribute to, do you remember Stevie Wonder? Oh, I do remember Ooh. that one, yeah, he was great. He was so good. And wasn't a, a relative of Kenny Metcalf's in that band or something? I can't remember, yeah, like his Ken daughter? I that we can't... Well, all goes, look, Kenny I'm Metcalf so is getting- I'm so obsessed with Kenny Metcalf. Yeah, Kenny Metcalf as Elton John. Look, he's getting a lot of promotion out of this, so- We I, have to stop, I need to I, talk about all the other I bands. I know, but he did give me a free hat once, so well, I feel like I owe him. Um, yeah, actually, uh, his daughters, two of his, yeah, he has two daughters, and I believe both of them sang backup um, for the Stevie Wonder band because his backup singers couldn't travel with him. So oh, I wow. just knew that these were such talented women. Uh, they know how to perform. Uh, and so I kind of put them together because when I said, would you like to be on the show? He's like, I would love to, but dot, 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 that date, there's a conflict and I won't have my backup singers. And I was like, well, uh, uh, I yeah. need the backup singers. Let's see what we can do for you. And that's another one, too. When you think about Stevie Wonder, you know, you have Superstitious and all those songs from the 70s. But then also I just called to say I love you. So it's like you have to, you know, you can't just obviously there are bands that cover only certain parts of, a, of a, the actual band's history. But it's probably best, especially when you're going to be on television, to get the ones that really cover everything. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, and then we'll talk one, one more question about the actual videos that you get to see, the submissions. Do you usually know right away, like, oh, this one's going to be great? Or oh, sometimes, yeah, yeah I, I would imagine that it's pretty instantaneous. Again, I need to kind of bring my husband into the mix on this one because we both work from home. So when I do get submission videos, sometimes I, I'm not, you know, I'm just on my laptop and I don't have my headphones on. And he's a writer, so he might be, you know, across the way on his computer writing away and really intense in thought. And I hit play and it's, it comes through my speakers. <laughs> and there have been distinct moments where he has gotten up from his computer and come over and gone, who's that? Because he likes them so right. much. And other times where he's literally like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, stop it. This is my job. Leave me alone. But yeah. it is really fun because it is great to have a sounding board at home. Um, and if, if you know anything about my family and my husband, he is a magnificent singer and comes from a singing background. And basically his family growing up were the Von Trops. He was one of seven with three step siblings. And so they basically all could sing in harmony together. And then, then you have me, who's pretty much tone deaf, somehow running a music show. <laughs> Right. Well, you know what? Maybe one day your husband will start his own tribute oh. band and be like, hey, can I get on the show? And he'll be like, eh, we'll see. Send me a tape. Send me a tape. Uh, not that type of tape. Not that kind of tape. <laughs> you perv. <laughs> now, uh, we spoke about this probably about a year ago when you were on my podcast, The Black Cast, and it, I noticed it's not in the lineup this year. So let's talk about 
the one act you're still trying to get a really good Bob Marley tribute. I want a really good Bob Marley. And and I love I love Bob Marley. It's such great summer music, you know, to have in the background. Um it's, and it, it just I love I love the one love, you know? Listen, it's such upbeat music. Why not have a tribute? There are tons of tributes around the country. I've searched, this is another one that I've done high and low. Um, there's a fantastic one, actually. I can't remember the name, they weren't booked. Their lead singer was white, and I just felt, I was like, yeah, if you're Bob gonna, Marley if you're has gonna... to be black. Like, that's just, yeah. this is, this again comes down to, it's not, it, I don't wanna say it's a color thing, but like, that's just kind of the persona. I, mean, it, it, I want someone, know. one of the things, and, and this is just to be very clear, is when Mark Cuban and I were talking about the show, one thing we said was we want people to be obviously to tune in for the show but if someone was just clicking by on channels to click by and see ours and stop for a minute and go wait a minute it's is that Mick Jagger you know and, and so I want someone to stop and go is is this a Bob Marley concert so for that reason you know I, I really want someone that you know can carry off the persona the look uh, the right. Attitude. Well, it's like we talked about this for television. It has yeah. to look that way. You know, if you were doing this for radio or for the internet or something, maybe you'd be like, "Well, it doesn't really matter what they look like." You know, it's just they have to sound like yeah, it. But yeah. But that takes such a huge part of the presentation. So, if you're out there and you have a Bob Marley tribute, please, please at Katie Darrell, she'll let you know where to send there it. There is a a real great one. Um, oh yeah, you go go to the Access TV website. It's just plain www. Axs. Dot TV, click on the picture of me. That will bring you to our show page, and it will tell you how to submit your band. Um, because I am always looking at submissions. There is a great one out of the UK. I have to say, uh, have stumbled upon these guys. We are chit chatting. That's all I can say. All right. Well, we're chit chatting. Not this season because we're going to talk now about what's on the docket. Now we already mentioned last week. Great tribute to Led Zeppelin. They did Led Zeppelin four in its entirety. Yes. Very exciting. You know, obviously you can pick a lot of albums from their discog mm. discography and have them play that. But Led Zeppelin four probably the best known, mostly because of Stairway to Heaven. But they were great, and they've yeah. been on before Led Zeppelin. Again. They were. They were our season finale episode for season two. Okay. Um. So I would say they are a back by popular demand. I know there was the person that asked about you know bands that get requested to come back. So I do get you know have the opportunity to bring back some acts um we brought them back we knew that we wanted to do the album in full because we wanted to pair that nicely with our season finale with the beatles which we'll go into a little bit that has a, a you know reason why we're doing full albums this season um how did you like those lasers lasers were amazing i tried to take pictures and post them on instagram but they just didn't do them justice yeah it's... and where yeah sort of where i was sitting over by the soundboard there were lasers just the whole time i'm like and the laser the whole time guy... you're like my eyes am i going yeah, to go blind the laser guys go around and like give their cards to everybody mm -hmm. at least in the vip section so i'm like man do i need lasers for anything if only we could have had some lasers in I here know. today but i should they... have i should have called the laser guy yeah but... they're artistic laser productions they are fantastic they did our lasers um when we had a pink floyd tribute uh which one's pink um, a couple seasons Who ago. Who also did uh, Dark Side of the Moon in its entirety. Exactly. On 420. On so 420, you want to talk about real ske perfect synergy. scheduling. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we're gonna, we had lasers last week. We're going to have lasers this coming up uh, Wednesday for our Metallica tribute. Big surprise because we it, it wasn't originally planned, but I decided to bring in the lasers, lasers again. just the lasers are so cool. And I think we're going to bring back lasers for... Our ELO tribute this season, oh, yeah, Electric I Light Orchestra. Want to talk about the ELO tribute. Um, and at least one more to be determined. I'm kind of uh, wiggling and deciding who's going to get. Just figuring that. out the laser budget for the season. <laughs> exactly. Have a laser budget. So let's talk about Damage Inc. That's this Wednesday. Mm -hmm. They're the Metallica tribute, and again, the show is World's Greatest Tribute Bands. It is Wednesdays at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Access TV. Tell us about this band. Uh, when I saw a photo posted of them, one of the guys looked like James Hetfield. I had to look for a second. I'm like, did they yes. use a picture of Metallica? Nope, the guy just looks like James Hetfield. And that's what's so fun about these bands is he does look like James. And just like, you know, we mentioned Hollywood U2, the Joe who plays Bono looks like Bono and can sound like him too. And our Mick Jagger for Mick and the Stones, first off, his name is really Mick and yeah. he looks like Mick Jagger. And you're like, I don't understand how the universe did this. <laughs> like, talk about having a doppelganger. It's like, you know, sometimes I want to know, like, where's the G Giselle Bunchen doppelganger, yeah. you know? Because 
<laughs> uh, maybe I'll just do a supermodel tribute show. Um, I think but, a lot of us would like to know where the Giselle Bunch did. Yeah, double, double uh, is. Damage Inc. So cool. Um, what's fun about the lead singer is he at one point had long hair as well and cut it before James Hetfield cut it, and he was like, "Ah, uh, the fans are gonna re get really bummed." And then all of a sudden, James cut his hair too, and he's like, "Nailed it!" Yeah, wow. So they're on the same brain wave wavelength. Uh, there are two brothers in this band. Oh, that's cool. Um, so I really like that Chris and Kevin Knight. So I kind of like the synergy of the bros together. Um, this band can play really hard. And I mean, if you're going to be a Metallica tribute, you have to. <laughs> this morning, I literally had to, uh, I sent them an email, um, and I was like, friendly reminder, there will be no moshing at this Wednesday <laughs> show because of all the TV gear. So obviously, we'll tell people upon entry and we'll make announcements before the show. But if you start to see anything get rowdy, please feel free to finger wag and you know yell at people in between songs or in between riffs. Hey, stop that up front because we're going to need so some help because, you know, it's Metallica. And as much as I would love the fans to get rowdy, please don't break our cameras. And the show sold out. So, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be uh, quite a crowd there. And uh, that that one's going to be excited. Uh, it's exciting. And we... I, 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 I do go through the set list with every band, and a uh, little spoiler alert or a sneak peek, I believe we are starting with Enter Sandman. I think that's a great so way to start. So don't miss the first yeah. minute. Don't, don't, yeah, don't tune in a couple minutes into the show. The week after that, on March 22nd, it's the ZZ Top tribute. So I'm I'm hoping that this band, Eliminator, has real beards. But if not, I'm sure that they're very convincing. Like, I feel like you're not even listening to me this whole time. Of course they have real beards. I don't know. So a lot of, I've seen some of these bands know me, and they have wigs. I know, you know? I know. But the, and that's I my mean, biggest pet peeve is a bad wig. It's okay yeah. if you have a wig, but please don't make it be a Halloween right. cheap $20 or if you, wig. If you have a bad wig, at least make sure that the person you're imitating has a really bad wig. I won't name <laughs> yeah. any names, but uh, you know who oh, I'm talking about. Oh, you know who in the band. Everybody knows who I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah um, so the um, ZZ Top guy they do have real beards. They are from Chicago. Their name is Eliminator, and it's very important to know that they are a Chicago Eliminator because there is an Eliminator out of Kansas as oh. well. Um, and they're fantastic. It, it, it was, you know, I, I got submissions from both the bands, and it's really hard because once you start seeing a bunch of bearded guys, you're like, wait, which one did I just click on? Uh, but these guys from Chicago are so nice, so fantastic to work with, very professional. Um, I'm just really excited to get them into the Whiskey A Go Go and see, pull their beards and see them play. <laughs> I think that that should probably probably be a picture that you post is you pulling on your <laughs> beards like that. The week and after then I'm going to dress them up as Gandalf after the show. <laughs> the week after that on March 29th, uh, the live at the Fillmore is the tribute to the Almond Brothers and you know that's another one where it's like, well that was such a, a you know, legendary great live yes. band. So you have to you have to be able to play the songs but also, you know, maybe not for television, but they would also jam for like 20 minutes between songs. So well, so that is a, a, a <laughs> this is this band has been so perfect professional and patient with me because when we started doing their set list um, one of the things they wanted to do was Whipping Post which is the song off of the Live at the Fillmore album which right. is you know ranked by Rolling Stone magazine as like the best live album of all time so if you know anything about this album and that song in general I believe it's 27 minutes that the band got up and jammed this song Whipping Post and so your show is just going to be them playing it twice. Well, so that was the problem <laughs> is these guys said we want to play Whipping Post and we want to do it, you know, as it, you know, was done live. And I had to say, but, you know, it's a 57 minute show. There's a commercial break. I need to chat a little bit. That only actually leaves you 51 minutes of actual music. And I'd like to hear a couple other songs as well. So we went back and forth and they did um, finally give in to me and they are playing Whipping Post, but I believe they're doing a 21 minute version versus 26. All right, version. so you're not going to be, you know, so, you know, Almond Brothers fans not yes. going to be too disappointed. Just, you're still going to get to see what you will. Post. You will hear Melissa and some of the other great songs as well. Yeah. Now, one that I'm very excited about is what we referenced before, Strange Magic, a tribute to ELO. Mm -hmm. ELO is this, like, amazing band that was so talented. Jeff Lynn was in that band. And it's more one of those bands that you kind of have to tell people, like, no, these are the ELO songs. Like, oh, I know all those songs. Yeah. But they don't necessarily right you away think of ELO. So talk a little bit about this band Strange Magic that's a tribute to Yellow. I was so impressed with their vocals because, you know, it, it, it is tough, you know, songs and vocals and um, 
just keeping it tight and not being cheesy. That's the other thing, is that was an era of music that can be very cheesy if not done properly. Um, and I just was very impressed when I talked to them on the phone and told them what my expectations were. And when I saw their submission videos and asked for additional links, everything was really, um, really turnkey with them. And what I love about this band is they are from Canada. Cause see, it is called the world's greatest tribute band. That's so right. I searched see. the world <laughs> and I went to Canada. <laughs> well, see, but that's great. And I'm excited to hear because that's another one of those ones where you'll watch and be like, oh, this song. Oh, and oh, this, this song. Oh, and I this. know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there've been a few of those where I'm like, oh, I think I like that band. And then I'm at the show and I'm like, oh, I like every single one of these yeah. songs. And that actually a couple years ago, we, we stumbled across that with uh, another band and that people were like, I don't know the songs. And so that's why we started putting a graphic on the screen, believe it or not, like a, you know, ELO song still to come. And so we would, we you will see that during the live TV oh, broadcast so that you are, you know, remembering, oh, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna change the channel because I know that song as well. So we're yeah. gonna be a little Oh, teaser. that Strange Magic band is going to play the song called Strange Magic after oh. we get back from commercial. So that's, now you're talking about those songs are hard to sing. How about on April 12th, the Queen tribute, which I'm very excited about because I think, I don't know that many people that ever saw Queen perform live. Right. Most, for the most part, you needed to be in the UK before really the mid eighties. Right. So I'm very excited for that band. Talk a little bit about their name is Almost Queen, correct? Yes, yeah. and they have two things that I find very exciting and important about them. Number one, they are endorsed um, by Queen's management. Queen's management has sent a letter on their behalf saying we support this band. So we're not being, gonna be litigious and sue you guys. Right. Um, so having the support of the real band is a big deal. It shows their quality and how authentic they are and paying their tribute. Uh, and number two, Howard Stern, which I know we are both huge fans yes. of. Howard Stern himself has seen this band perform and is quoted as saying, and I may have it a little bit off, but basically says this Queen tribute is better than the current touring Queen. Right, which is with Adam Lambert, who yeah. is a great singer, but he's not Freddie Mercury. And, no. I, and you know what? You know who would probably be the first one to say he's not Freddie Mercury? Adam Lambert. Right. You right. know, it's a great gig, good for him. But so to get a tribute to Freddie Mercury oh, and in guy Almost has Queen. The outfits, he has that microphone twirl. He's got an epic mustache. I was just going to say, I'm sure, because now the, I didn't mean to insult you with the ZZ Top yeah. beards. I knew that the mustache was going to be there. <laughs> He's so, growing it now. I, yeah, very excited for that one. And as we alluded to earlier, on the 19th is going to be a non-rock performer. But talk about the Dolly Parton tribute that will right. be that day. So this is one... Um, which is going to be tricky, you know, the Whiskey A Go-Go, when you think of Sunset Strip, you don't think about, you know, country music. Right. But Dolly Parton is so important. She is the number one selling female country artist of all time. Um, she does so much for her community. She, you know, even remember when the wildfires of Tennessee, right. you know, a couple months ago, she immediately, you know, jumped into action, had a benefit concert, which actually was broadcast on Access TV. Um, she's just so sweet. Her songs are fantastic. I mean, a lot of people forget, you know, she was the original singer and writer for I Will Always Love You, the right. Whitney Houston song that everyone associates with the bodyguard. That was Dolly. Um, and so I just thought, you know, it may not be a whiskey a go-go type band, but it it certainly is a an artist that deserves to have a tribute and be represented. And Access TV, again, we show, you know, the TV show Nashville. We have a lot of, you know, country artists um, in concert on the network. It's going to hit, uh, it's going to be a home run for the network. There's and, no doubt in my mind. And you told me that uh, the performer, I guess it's Karen oh. as Dolly, that she doesn't just sound like her when she sings. She actually speaks that way, too, I know. which I is love adorable. Her. <laughs> when I called her to do the first telephone interview, it was Christmas time, and we're chit-chatting, and I got lost in her voice, which within the first 30 seconds because it was just so sweet and just down to home. Um, and then in the middle of the conversation, she's like, hold on, I need to take out my cookies out of the oven. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I love you. And uh, going to the wigs, I, when she was booked and, and I said, I need you to send me your promo photos because we need to put together some artwork um, you know, using your photos. She's like, give me two more weeks. I just ordered a $4,000 wig and I want to make sure my photos are taken with the good stuff. And yeah. I respect and appreciate that because, you know, again, the attention to detail. Now you guys know when you tune in, it is a wig. Um, that that hair, I mean, Dolly, even Dolly wears a wig, you know, but um, it's nice to know that she, you know, went out of her way to get the top qualities. For right, and I mean, that's the thing too, that we talked about how important the appearance is. A lot of these bands put 
a lot of the money that they make from performing mm -hmm. and touring back into the stage yeah. show. I remember talking to the guys in the Kiss tribute, which was called Mr. Speed. Whoa. They spent like 20 grand so much on their costumes and all their stage setup. But if you're going to be a Kiss tribute, it has to look good because yeah. I've, I've seen others that aren't as good and you're just like, no. oh, they're just guys and You can't yeah. just buy a bedazzled gun yeah. and do this. You have to have it professionally <laughs> sewn yeah. on, you know, and they really, they spent a lot of money on their and, costumes. And it really translated to so, because that, for me personally, that was my favorite one, but that's just because of the kind of music that I like. That liked. was my favorite dress of all time that I wore to that show, by the way. So if you can go back and reference any photos um, of that night on my Facebook page, the dress I wore for the Mr. Speed. Um, was one of your favorites. So now I'll, I'll have to look for that one because I, I can't say that I remember. It was fringe. It was red. There were cutouts. <laughs> it was so sexy. Uh, we're, we're running a little short on time. So uh, the next couple weeks okay. after that, we have April uh, 26th, <gasps> Dave Matthews Band. Not a huge fan myself, okay. but I know people love that band. Every yeah. summer, my Facebook feed blows up from people that are so excited to go see mm -hmm. Dave Matthews again, like they do every summer. So yes. great live band, which I can I, I can respect. Saxophone, that. Yeah. fiddle, top musicians, uh, hard vocals to nail. Uh, this band actually, one of the band members is a full time fireman. So I kind of love that it fit in his schedule because you know firemen are like one day on, two right, day off. Yeah. And so like luckily they were able to get out here on a Wednesday night to perform. They're from Texas. Um, I just think that this is a, a great one, not only in the venue when you come and see it live and be part of the audience because it's a jammy song, so it's easy to just have a beer in your hand and relax. But watching at home, you're going to kick your feet up and you're going to feel like, you know, this is a summer jam band. I could be at the Red Rocks, you know, close your eyes and just listen to the music and you'll really fall in love with them. And then the penultimate show of the season, May 3rd, Dreamer, tribute to Super Tramp, Dreamer. which is another band, has great songs, but you better be able to hit those high notes. <laughs> you got to be able to hit those high notes. Another band from Canada. So this is fantastic. They have two Canadian bands. Eh? Wow. Um, uh, exactly. You know, just there's talent. It's just there's just bands that are easy to put together a tribute band and so oh, I'm going to maybe do Motley Crue, you know, because it's a fun band, but the vocals aren't necessarily as hard. Um, yeah. And then you have Super Tramp and you have to be a, a true musician to be able to pull that off. Yeah, so very excited for that one. And let's talk about the grand finale, The Beatles by the Fab Four, performing in its entirety, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, which I did some quick addition. That album is 50 years old later this year. Yes. So a great choice. Talk about having that band, whereas there's been a different Beatles tribute before. Right. Having them perform mm. Sgt. Pepper in its entirety. So we have, we've done the Beatles twice before this, once with the Fab Four and once with Britain's Finest. Both were fantastic. Both were really good at doing the quick changes for me because I think I required both of those bands to not only do the early era and some Sgt. Pepper songs and the later era. So there was like three wardrobe changes. At one point, I remember like Ringo trying to run on stage without a shoe in between, you know, <laughs> commercial breaks um, but because of Sgt. Pepper's being 50 years this um, this year I thought you know we just need to actually I need to give credit to Danny Zach um, one of our producers over at the network he was the one that brought that to my attention and he said you know this is a big you know milestone 50 years of Sgt. Pepper so I said let's do this in its entirety but then there will be some minutes left over because it's going to be a 90 minute episode so they right. will pull out some of the later music as well um, and this is I mean there's like a sitar involved in that album well, so we're, yeah, we're flying there, in a there, sitar there's player. an entire sitar song yeah. on Sgt. Pepper's and that's the other thing too is like obviously the Beatles have not been an active band since 1970 but even when they were they didn't they never, play these songs live no Jimi Hendrix played uh, Sgt. Pepper's live, but the Beatles never they did. They never played it. Yeah, so I, I'm very <clears throat> excited for that show. And that will be May 10th on World's Greatest Tribute Bands. That's Wednesday, May 10th, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, just like it is every Wednesday. And we talked about all these great shows coming up. Are there any that any bands that you think of that you love the band, but you know what, maybe not a good fit for the show? You know, like a tribute to that band. Um... You know, I've, I've explored the idea of doing a Green Day, um, sure. which I just, I, I've actually found a couple that are really great, but I just don't know if that's going to resonate with my TV viewer. Right. So um, same with like Oingo Boingo. A lot of people are like, you need to get Oingo Boingo or Morrissey. And I just, I, I'm a little bit on the fence and need to kind of, believe it or not, I think, consult with the network a little bit more. I think if you've got a Morrissey who also did Smith songs, that would yeah. definitely help. But uh, yeah, I, you know, th that's what you can do is you can sort of really go to what ultimately really they're kind of niche artists, even though they're right. hugely successful, and it doesn't necessarily translate to TV. Anyway, well, hopefully all these bands are on in the future, including 
a Bob Marley tribute that yeah, you find hopefully. somewhere yeah. between now and season nine. But anyway, Katie, thank you so much for spending so much time chatting with me. Again, my guest has been Katie Darrell. She's on Twitter at Katie Darrell. Very simple. Yes, very and simple. And the website is uh, Axis.tv if they if A-X-S. anybody's interested. Yeah, AXS. Dot TV. So uh, for Wait, can, can yeah. I jump in really yeah, quick? Yeah, please. Um, Sharp dressed man. I believe Star Drew asked what was my favorite oh, ZZ yeah. t- Top song. Sharp dressed man. And I, I, I assume we're going to hear it on uh, the twenty second. Sharp dressed man and legs. But we'll Ooh, see. Tush. You're going to have to tune in and find out. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks so much, Katie Darrell. Uh, I'm Christian Blatt on Twitter at Christian DMZ. Thanks so much for watching and listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.